means winter. So we'll check it out. Um, assuming that obviously the laning duos are going to be the exact same as we kind of expect. Which lane should we keep our attention to? Uh, sniper lane, I guess. I like watching the sniper's lane. There's always kills in that lane. The Dragonite okay, lane okay. is like farm fast lane. So, oh, this is an interesting way of uh, smoking. They went to the lane, I guess, trying to see if uh, anyone's around to, I don't know, play some wars or whatever. It's so rather strange to walk through, through the lane, but it's definitely interesting. All the way around, but they won't encounter anyone just yet. But Yaturo might just walk up the high ground if they stay in the area. And quickly Q checks if they have a high ground ward. Yaturo... Does he know? Actually, they, he marked up that, or someone else marked up in his team. I think it was actually Maposhka that he should go through the lane instead of through the uh, his own jungle. So, Peace Spirit knows what's up. They know how OG play. No surprises at the start of the Do game. they know how to beat OG? That is the more important question. I mean, you Knowing know, GI champions can, can probably <laughs> be, uh, to be fair, they're up against the back-to-back. Even though it's a completely different lineup. <laughs> Man, this back-to-back -back record is going to be... I feel like it's going to be around for a very long time. I don't think it's ever... I mean, I'm not saying never going to get broken, but... Be careful with that word, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's rough to try and break that one. I mean, there were years where VP was the best team in the world. And Secret as well. And they never got that TI victory. Yeah. So you see uh, bot lane, Chu getting sidekick level 1, so just uh, allowing the sniper to secure last hits, harass and trade much better. And Mira opted Radiant's to go for disruption, so just attack. wants to try to hold back that aggression from OG. Try to allow Beastmaster to secure some last hits. He's got the small camp block, and uh, the medium camp is also blocked by OG. So yeah, it's gonna be all about how can they control yeah. the creeps, who can get the creeps near his tower. Uh, Yuragi starting off with headshot. What kind of build do you like to see? The shrapnel or the headshot take aim build? I like I like shrapnel. Shrapnel gives you uh, kill potential in this lane, but he's deciding to go for headshot and take aim. So I guess trying to just like focus more on you know last hit, uh, last hitting, securing uh, good trades. He doesn't really want to put uh, himself in a dangerous spot, you know. Because if you have trap now, maybe you play too aggressive, you might, you know, die in the lane more. And uh, BCM in mid having a decent time up against Laurel currently, a bit better than what we saw in the previous uh, series, of course. Yeah, this lane should be pretty straightforward. I feel like. Uh... Perfect play, nobody is going to die. It's just like taking runes, you're waiting for the support to help you. Yada, yada, yada. And just trade here, HP for mana. And top lane, Miposhka, he's chasing Taiga out of here. Yo. So the side lanes are definitely more interesting than the mid lane. A lot more going on. And no aggressive moves coming out from these two teams so far. Uh, so you mentioned, of course, uh, the tiny blink dagger really being the timing for Team Spirit. And with uh, that in mind, late game, is that one area of the game that Team Spirit are uh, scared of? I, I feel like late game against a sniper with their lineup, yeah. I, I feel like a sniper and the storm will be a big problem in late game. So they definitely don't want a game to go too long, you know. I'm sure their late game is not not too bad as well with the tiny. If you get agonies and the data, we saw how much the hero can do. But I prefer not to go there, you know, with the draw against Storm and Sniper. Well, DM, he's not really struggling in the lane. He's got that Dragon's Blood. He's surviving pretty nicely. His mana got drained by Maposhka, but he's a DK. Who right? needs mana? Who needs mana? DK doesn't need mana. Well, Taiga's actually taking a lot of damage as well. They're starting to get hurt, but Maposhka in return needs to also be careful that he doesn't get yeah. sniped by an arrow, for instance. That's why he's Caris. hiding as much as possible behind the creeps. Career is coming with regen, you know. So they should be fine. I, don't, I, I think they just need to be careful for this couple of uh, waves and then make sure they heal back up with the tangles. They should be fine. And bot lane, look at Yuragi. He's getting dove under the tower. And that's a big kill. Chu 
Uh, Shadow Poison is nasty. That's why Magic Stick is so good in that lane to deal with. But uh, a pretty aggressive move coming out. They're actually looking for more level 2 Wild Axes. Could even drop a Hawk behind it. Will they go for a possible chew kill? Here is the question. No, they're going to back off. TP comes in from Yuragi. He does have shrapnel at level 2 now. <laughs> Look at that and range. Yeah. Oh my it's so God. terrible. The rebound yeah. range is so god-awful at level 1. Yeah, that's why I'd rather have like a second point in the sidekick, to be honest, in most cases in the lane. Let's uh, help your carry fight uh, the offlaner. The second point on the sidekick is actually pretty good. Extra 15 damage. Yeah, but this, this lane is uh, definitely not going well for Sniper. That was a pretty costly death. Another missed rebound. So are they going to go on them? Any aggressive plays? I guess not. SD doesn't have enough mana to be aggressive here. But Beastmaster, he's able to pull the way back to the tower, so he's going to be able to secure a lot of good farm here for himself. And Shrapnel does, of course, also auto push the lane a little bit out. Mira, slightly out of mana, so trying to get some clarity. Regen going in towards mid. It's uh, BZM forced to walk all the way back to base. His teammates have, you know, they didn't get that TP towards mid because obviously the only one that died was the sniper so far. So he didn't get a free refill. Actually charged forward by Chewie's trying to go for the kill here on the collapse. Will die, collapse. He does have himself Helm of Iron Will, so he is very tanky. And Yuragi's getting Shadow Poison stacks on top of him. Oh, the ball. To slow him down. Three stacks. Yuragi is stuck and controlled. And even the high five sent out. Collapsed man. with a double kill. Yeah. What a giga chat, man. <laughs> the BM. He, he doesn't even use like this mana to use the axe. You know, he knows he can just kill him the right click and give him a high five. Man, this collapse, man. Just making the plays. Every game I watch this guy, like, he just... Uh, has something special to show us. The guy's pretty uh, impeccable going for the Helm of the Dominate. He's gonna have it at a pretty good timing with those two kills. And Yuragi not enjoying that so far. Also, the Helm of the Iron Will is so incredibly good against Sniper. He barely does any damage to you. You need extra Rift Bands. <laughs> Four Rift Bands. <laughs> oh, please, God, no. I remember the storms with like the, uh, <laughs> uh, but for uh, six, yeah. actually six no time. Oh no, five no five no talismans. Yeah, that one was... and one B and a BKB right. Five no boots, <laughs> and then just never upgrading. Maybe get an equipped Ags in one go. Like okay, it was a weird time. Oh, yeah, DM just he's having a pretty. Phenomenal time. His net worth is not the greatest, but he also hasn't fallen just yet. They're going to go in on Maposhka, and the Enchantress will die to DM. Yatro cannot harm the DK at this stage just yet. Yeah, too much armor, too much sustain. Uh, he's he's just going to, going to focus on his own farm, you know, get his level 6 up, you know, go to the jungle, just try to get as much farm as you can, and whenever the DK pops uh, his Dragon Palm later, just try to Come to the lane and clear the crit wave. And mid lane, uh, Lara is getting a, a bottle refill, so that's the good thing about your supports dying on the side lane. BZM just crying. Why don't you give me a refill? This is the second time he has to walk back to base. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you feel like sometimes you know? Okay, never mind. DM Dragon Farm is going oh, for Yatoro. Top. Yeah, the road does not have gusts, needs help, no TPs coming in whatsoever, so actually, I was wondering why they didn't go for the kill there, but I guess they wanted to make sure that BZM got it and GM just walked it off. Nonetheless, a big kill comes out onto Yatro, dropping him low. Maposhka went towards mid to make sure that the uh, eight minute runes would be in hands of Laurel, which he'll be able to get bottled up, a nice arcane. And he's queued up that he wants to go for the Blink Dagger first, which uh, you mentioned is obviously a very important choice this game. Yeah, very, very important. He's going to have a, a lot of responsibility in the K team play for his team, you know, because Beastmaster is going to be, you know, sitting in a lane, pushing out the ways, pressuring the towers, and here comes BZM. Arrow's not going to connect, so I guess no kills. Actually gives Laurel but... attack speed for, <laughs> for the extra brief death timer of the... Uh, under, I think, no, what's it called? Uh, it's not. Oh, they're, they're actually getting the tower. Wow, okay. It's just Enchantress being a Enchantress, you know? You got towers this early with the hero. 
And a tiny, even though he only has level 1 tree grab, it still does significant damage. Bottom lane, collapse, walking in. He does roar up Yuragi. That's the target that they're going to go for, even though Chu is so incredibly low and can drop in a second. Yuragi's going to get blasted by the Hellbear Smasher. Can he get out of there? No, he cannot. One kill for collapse. And honestly, they need to be a bit careful that he does oh, not he get Oh, he might more. get Chu here. Axe is off cooldown. Got the range creep as well. And the Ooh, nice, man. Collapse is a beast. This guy is oh, so good. Oh, Kaiga on the run. Does have two more leaps. He's running right towards Maposhka. The slow is there. One more leap available. The toss forward. He tries to get out, but again, collapse. Arguably best offlaner in the world. I mean, look at his net worth. Every game, I feel like I'm watching him play. He's like top net worth at 10 minutes. And he has so much fancy footwork, juking the enemy, amazing solo kills. Like that guy just never stops giving, you know. <laughs> On the opposing side, they do also have a, a very scary player in BGM on that storm that can make some plays. He's going for the Witchblade, so he's looking to get some solo kills, uh, which makes a lot of sense. The supports on Team Spirit are very susceptible to just get, getting blown up. Maposhka has no uh, healing on him, and the Shadow Demon is also not a hero with the biggest HP pool. Yeah, the SD is going to be the hero that he wants to focus on in every fight because of the save, you know. If you don't go on him first as a storm, he's just going to save uh, the hero that you go on. So you have to find the SD before the fights uh, happen and take him out. Flaps doesn't even have a point in Inner Beast. That's something you rarely see on Beastmasters these days. I mean, for the lane, if you want to kill with the ball, I guess it makes a lot of sense to get that second point on the ball. But in certain lanes, I feel like it's fine, you know. If your lane has a lot more kill threat compared to the enemy's lane, I feel like it's good to get the second point in the ball to just help you get the extra slow, you know. Sometimes it's just that a bit of slow that allows you to catch up and Get the extra kill. And... They're giving the stacks to collapse as well. Look at the triangle. Obviously, yeah. who, oh. else, who else is going to get a stack? You think they're going to let get Toro get it? No, man. <laughs> collapse is a true carry. Collapse is a true carry. Oh, focusing everything to make collapse his game perfect. And uh, Helm of the Overlord yeah. so early. This is just, it, he's going to be able to run down any lane. Man, he only has an arcane ring, you know, just in case he needs more mana for doing the stacks. Who cares about the old axe being gone? Old axes are still disastrously dangerous. Laurel's blink dagger still a little bit off. Upside actually. I mean, do, you, do, 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 do you think that spell should cost a little bit more mana? Like 65 is a bit too little. Yeah, it actually does a lot of damage for 65. But this is, you know, the spam that you need to do as well. Like the fact that Beastmaster is a strength hero with well, his end gain is not too terrible. But definitely should be a, a, at least a significant amount more. Yeah, and Lara on the meme, on the other hand, he's almost there to his blink. So it's going to allow his team to slowly but surely start to make more aggressive plays. Uh, everyone else is happy getting their levels, getting their farm. Mira is also uh, getting his level 7 here, maxing the poison. So he does a fair bit of damage in the team fights. But it gets spotted out, Chew. Uh, we'll at least get the counter ward, but towards bottom, Taiga. There is killed a the creep. Every rotation. He killed Beastmaster's creep. He did his job. <laughs> well, Collapse has the helm of the Overlord now, so that's going to be a little bit more problematic. Even kept the ancient Black Dragon alive so he could uh, scoop it up I mean, towards this, mid. Catch this... onto Laurel. This is a pretty big one, and they blow him up very quickly. Tiger dies in response towards bottom, but uh, the Laurel tiny kill is way more important because he was so very close to that Blink Dagger as yeah. well. Very big kill there, for sure. Like, he's stopping the Blink Dagger timing. Oh, yeah. And Collapse is here. The true carry. Can he get a roll? Gem's got Blink, but it gets interrupted by the Shadow Poison spam. But he gets... He can Blink if he wants to. I mean, they defended the tower. I think that's uh, the more important Radiant's thing, you know. Lao dying there is definitely not ideal for them, but they held the tower, so Tiny should still be able to get his blink in a pretty decent timing. Another wave of creeps, and they're good to go. Toss, 
right click and yeah his daggers online so easy peasy still That's and this rough. has also... got to be like one of the fastest helm of the overlord man it's, he had it at 30 minutes oh yeah bro. he's very much dead farming inside the radiance jungle they did smoke up to go for that kill and found him yeah. completely alone without his team anywhere nearby this happens a lot you know when your team places like uh you, you see in the jungle they have a very deep ward so you as the carrier oh, okay i have vision here you know i'm safe here you know you farm and then you just forgot sometimes you know the enemy can smoke and then you get caught up you die so the ward that was meant to protect you actually killed you <laughs> that's a saucy ward right there in comes the toss back on to chew and well the moment he lands he is, is a goner top side dm has honestly been just relaxing and farming away as well. But they're going to go into the pit. This is a early Roche attempt. The Drow walking in as well. They have a very good Roche lineup. Do they know on the side of OG or do they even suspect anything? It's too fast, man. Oh, they scan it, but it's, it's, it's already way gone. Too fa it's way too fast, man. Maybe Beastmaster and the Helm. Uh, Shadow Demon is also a pretty strong hero, you know? <laughs> At Draining Roche, you do a lot of damage with the poison. Oh, they're smoked up. Mira's gonna be the target oh, getting jumped here. And Mira is gonna get the disruption off on himself. Stays alive for the time being. Lara was a lot of damage coming through. Chu is gonna be the first one down and they will get Mira as well. So a one for one trade. Nothing much more gain. Clap still has his roar available as well. So they have everything on Team Spirit if they want to go for a second round. Are they waiting for any items? I guess just B. I guess BKB. BKB on draw. Tiny doesn't really need a BKB. He's going Echo Saber. Yeah, I think he needs to scale. You know? This might be a very long game. So if he, if he doesn't scale, I feel like a uh, late game they could be in a spot where the draw doesn't do enough damage. So I definitely feel like Law has to start to realize that he needs to play for himself as well. You know, because this game might go late. Yeah, and the uh, late game is not too bad here for OG Storm Spirit. BK, with, uh, if he gets to a point sniper? where he gets I mean, ah, sniper, I feel like scary. They, their heroes are stronger late game. I feel like if you're OG, you, you're happy, you know, if he goes 40 minutes, 50 minutes with a Storm and Sniper. Even the DK, right, we've seen. Black Dragon is pretty good. You can't create illusions with it, though. Of course, uh, Shadow Demon, when you get to that point in the game where you get like Ag, Blink, uh, Aether, Shard, you're also a very deadly tool. Nope, Taiga, trying to kill the career. <laughs> and just trying to do sneaky stuff, you know, behind enemy lines. But Collapse is pushing Giant for the tower. Has been Got that uh, ancient Ice Shaman, which has fire, uh, Ice Firebomb that you can use on buildings. Does a attack. bit of da extra damage. Radiant's bottom tower. It's what? It's 400 damage? Holy uh, shit. Yeah, but it does 25% on building, so it's just 100. Oh, okay. Okay, I did. <laughs> okay. So that's 100 damage. Okay, fine. That's not too bad. But every little bit helps. It's kind of like Jakiro's uh, fire. Liquid spell. fire. Liquid fire, that's it. Well, uh, net worth wise, they're pretty even Stevens, and. Looking for a catch here. Laurel's got the blink. Gets the Avatars onto two. The roar comes out onto DM. Quickly gets a double kill. And Maposhka's the one that gets both of them. Because, you know, God Enchantress in the game. Get that Hurricane Pike at this stage. Ags and Aghanim Scepter as well. Just pour up. Yeah, Max Impetus, man. He knows that they're going to run into damage issues, you know. So he has to do damage as Enchantress. I think one of the reasons uh about enchant like enchantress that's hard to play it's like you need to know when you should be the heal the tank and when you need to itemize and use your skill build to be the damage healer you know i think he's recognizing it correctly here they don't really have enough damage until the drow gets more items so he needs to fulfill uh, that role you know in the early engages you know he needs that pure damage to kill dragon knight especially yeah power treads on inch is uh inch five is not necessarily always shown but it is pretty strong he also has that grove bow uh, even though they have a drow ranger on their team <laughs> who's with the occult bracelet right now hmm. yeah what that's weird 
<laughs> that's a strange one. They might he might just give it to Yatra. Well, I guess it makes sense because Draw is just farming, right? Like Ench is the one fighting, so he he deserves the fighting item. <laughs> yeah, it would still piss off a lot of uh, safe laners, though. Uh, they do Don't have, say it. Don't a say philosopher it. Philosopher Stone available for the side of Spirit, and no one has it in their inventory right now. Mira sticking with the Tumblr story. Bifoshka, obviously, you know, he's a right click support core right now. I have Grove Bow. I don't need the Philly Stone. <laughs> I'm actually curious on what his next item is going to be on Maposhka. I, I, I wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he went star, for either. Four star Dragonlance, Hurricane, yeah. Hurricane Pike. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes for her uh, for Dragonlance first. Oh, so you're thinking no, not even Hurricane Pike, just Dragonlance. Oh no, Hurricane Pike, Pike but first uh, the the Dragonlance because she's just. Looking really strong at this point. I mean, if you're really greedy and you feel like you can do the damage in a fight and carry the team fights, going Dragon Lands into X seems like a pretty good idea as well. This game, because it allows you to take down the DK quickly, and if you manage to get yourself on to Sniper, you can also kill him. Could be a good idea, you know. Why do you need four stuff to run away when you can just kill the guy in front of you? That is uh, indeed a very good statement. They also have pretty good tower push that they're using right now. Of course, Collapse with the RS coming in. You've got the Enchantress, the Drow, the tiny buildings just Radiant melt in top front top of their top. vision. And uh, as you can see, the Tier 2 tower top is gone. The Tier 2 tower bottom is gone. The only Radiant Tier 2 standing for OG is mid. And then high ground will be the uh, next target. They're already knocking on the gates as well. It's going to do a bit of damage here. Midwave gets cut by Laurel. So no shenanigans coming in, and they're going to need to defend because it's dropping very uh, quickly. I mean, the tower's down, man. It's too late. Oh, going in the on Sniper's to... not here. Sniper needs to be here. Oh, well, finally, Yuragi's there, but he gets oh, tossed no. back. Oh, the silence as well. Yuragi's going to get out of there. Is there a save? There's none available. DM's going to be the char next one charge. Zip in. Does a lot of damage. Maposka is dead, but they find a two-for-one trade, and it's two cores just for the Ench 5. I mean, OG totally disrespected uh, them, you know. They didn't feel like they had Don't enough damage, you know. But oh, Laurel again. another toss back. Oh, Tyga. no. Taiga. Philippe gets himself out of there just barely. But no, he will still be found out by Collapse in the end. That's just going to be a set of racks here at 20 minutes in the game. Yeah, this Beastmaster draw is just too strong at this point of the game, you know. OG is definitely... It's Dragonlance Butterfly. Butterfly. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. And it's very helpful against the sniper as well. The evasion is early. The extra AG from Man. Maposhka as well. I mean, Team Spirit just just take took a Rex, you know, twenty minutes. Oh, actually no, actually, they, no they I thought they took. They, they build, <laughs> I thought uh, they took one. Okay, they didn't get the Rex. They didn't get the tower. But I'm actually surprised okay. that they didn't at least you know hang around for it. Obviously, it could be a little bit dangerous, but Rex at this how stage did, is very. How important. did they not get the Rex? What the hell? They just backed off. It's yeah, they got two amazing tossbacks uh, from Lara, but I uh, just uh, couldn't output enough damage to get the Rex. But the next time that happens again, I'm pretty sure they'll get the full lane of Rex. But Aegis is out right now, so they have to wait for, I guess, the BKB on Draw Ranger. That's uh, the next timing. It's going to take a bit. He's going to go for the Blink Dagger as well. Repositioning is going to be very important in this game to get the silence off on Storm. Who, uh, BZM has the Kaya Sanj finish, going for the BKB next. DM is building up his own BKB. Sniper actually, Yuragi has a Hurricane Pike and Chrysalis. So very aggressive on the damage output for the Sniper. Yeah, Laro has a haste. He has a haste right now. That could be very, very crucial in this fight, you know, if they can get, a, again, a good toss back. Ideally on the sniper. Uh, do they have uh, the Hawk coming in? Yeah, they're going to have uh, the vision advantage here. I, I feel like OG shouldn't run up this high ground here. They have a DD. Oh, DD. Oh, and no, Yuragi that's a bait. Toss back in trouble. Roared up. Yuragi's dropping low. And Laura with that haste room charging for more. DM is just going to get slowed with the demonic purge. Nothing the DK can do except be distraction oh, so that no. no one else falls. They even they waited to give the bottle there to the sniper, and that just cost them both. Yeah, that was way too greedy, you know. I mean, they, they probably should should know, you know, that, that spirit might be around the vicinity there. Because if it's pretty obvious that if they are not hiding in their base, they might be actually taking 
the defense there on the high ground, you know, defending the, the ancients area. You know? So that was a pretty bad mistake there by OG, uh, taking the rune there. Too risky there. So right now, they, they are going to be alive in 5 seconds. So should still be in time to defend the melee racks, but they're definitely going to lose the range racks here. Yeah, range rack falls. Mid tier 2 has also been secured. Uh, Roche, when will it respawn is the big question. That's a lengthy Roche respawn timer, but they've got so much map control. Yeah, that's good for OG. If it's fast, then it'll be better for Spirit. Uh, How's the BKB coming along for Drow? He almost has it. 1000 gold away. That's going to be, I, I feel like, the biggest item that we give them uh, an edge on the team fights. You can't always bank on the fact that Laurel is getting ungodly tossback plays on Yuragi. It's, right, uh, yes, Beastmaster Vision, you know, with the Hulk, you know, I would say it's pretty reliable. <laughs> and even if it goes wrong, you can shut disrupt him to keep him alive a little bit longer on the tiny. Mm -hmm. He's actually going for Ag, so Laurel. Uh... Also, just yeah, by, uh, the, skipping by the way, now. Beastmaster just bought a four star. <laughs> oh, that's really well done by Collapse. They're just making sure that they can keep everyone because uh, that's the one thing that OG does have a scary amount of is like dive with the DK jump sip in uh, Marcy on top of you. They can blow up a player, but if you just have a bunch of four staffs, Mifoshka went for Glimmer Cape instead of uh, and the gem. I think the gem especially is the, the big one to cut down any bit of vision that OG might have. Yeah, and Yuragi is also going, he's going Moonshot next year, so he feels like they don't have enough damage in the team fights. Well, if he's dead, there's no damage, that is true. But then shouldn't he buy BKB and just... Oh yeah, no, 100%. To... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try to deal with like, the toss oh, not I feel like Yuragi uh, under oh, vision no, again. again oh the oh, heart no. just spots him out another one secured lol charging for more can they get out of there is the big question Marana ulti was used but they just every single time get a glimpse of their opponents toss a play they walk underneath this sentry that was still lying in wait in that area Chu pops his ulti because he's trying to get anything done roar on to DM the beacon is going to get blown up double buyback coming out from OG they have the triple as well but can they make oh, look at the damage. Work? Mira oh is just walking God. away. Zip comes through from BZM. He's out of mana on the storm. Avatar's play comes through. And there's Maposhka with the impetus damage on top. Boom! They take a smackdown. Yatro going for DM. Nope. Chance against Another Yatro. buyback. BKB. Storm is buying back as well. Zipping back in. BZM. Can he get the damage? Collapse finally falls. They're going to go for Yatro, but there is Laurel as well. Doesn't have any spells at the ready. Yatro, will they find the Mirana? Yes, they do. BZM's the last one standing. Even the Ancient Thunder High Clap Man. is there. And those cheeks got clapped completely. Absolutely <laughs> demolished by Team Spirit. Lau is definitely one. the MVP for that fight, man. He's showing why Tiny is his best hero, and he, he did like what four combos in that fight, finding the right kills, uh, finding the right initiations, and just made it so easy.